Hi there, I'm Clarice and you're on the Live Ready channel. I'm going to share my best tips for getting a fire started with a ferro rod and some common mistakes. Ow. Yeah, that's what not to do. YouTube injuries. I'm calling you and you don't come and I'm wondering why. He's stuck in there. There it goes. Bite you. Kitty. can bite you. Now before I light this tinder bundle, there are a couple of mistakes that I've made in the past that I know some other people might be making out there that um, can keep you from getting a fire started the first time every time. And one of those is actually not applying enough pressure throughout the entire length of the ferro rod. So what ends up happening is you get these tiny little bumps that develop on your ferro rod or it wears away on the middle and not towards the end. And it can mean that your ferro rod becomes less effective when you're trying to start a fire or you don't get enough of the material off the rod. Um, so you don't get enough sparks, it doesn't generate enough heat and you don't end up lighting the tinder bundle. Other things are using a knife or an instrument or a striker that doesn't have a 90 degree spine and um, not processing your tinder well enough. Now in terms of ferro rods you get many different kinds. The larger ones are obviously better for cold weather because you rely more on your gross motor skills and the smaller ones are obviously better to carry on you because they're lighter. The second thing is you need something to strike it and most ferro rods come with something like this some of the other steel striker and they usually have a upside and the reason why they say this side needs to go up is because they've left a burr on the underside um, when they made it and that burr scrapes the ferro rod really easily so you get better sparks with it so ideal to have the right way up but this is not my favorite thing to use for ferro rod fire making I really prefer a knife and I honestly can say it really makes a difference having a knife with a 90 degree spine so let me give you an example um, this Mueller knife of mine doesn't have a 90 degree spine and I still manage to strike it and I still manage to get sparks with it but to give you a comparison so I know that that is the the better edge to use to try and get sparks with this knife um, whereas the Mora Companion that I carry it doesn't actually come with a 90 degree spine but I had one put on by a really great knife maker shout out to the guys at Safari Outdoor and um, he left a burr on for me kindly so that makes it a lot easier for me to strike it so let me show you so this doesn't have a 90 degree spine and it's not really easy to strike with this but I'm gonna give it my best shot so that's not very good so let's compare that to this knife which does have a 90 degree spine on it So you see that makes a huge difference. So if you're trying to light a fire, something with a 90 degree spine, whether it be a saw um, or a knife with a 90 degree spine or something like a multi-tool that's got a saw on it um, that has a 90 degree spine is going to make a huge difference to the amount of effort that you need to put in to get that fire lit. So that's your striker and your knife and I can't stress the third item that you need enough. You need a well-processed tinder bundle. Having some grass and having just a little nest that you've made up um, isn't going to make it particularly easy for you to get your fire lit. You need to process this. The reason why is because as you process it, the fibers split and they become these tiny little fibers and it makes it so much easier to get it lit. Um, and do yourself a favor, take a walk in the area that you usually camp out or that you plan to bug out and you'll find that there are different materials that um, light faster than other ones and if you find whatever lights fast you can start a fire a lot faster than um, if you just sit around processing a tinder bundle so this is this is grass that grows in the area and I know this lights really well so what I usually do oh <laughs> hey that was scary um what I usually do is I'll I'll process the tinder hey Indy come <laughs> I'll process the tinder bundle but right in the middle I'll put this that I know burns very easily and I know that that's going to help me to light 
um, the tinder bundle. In fact, if I throw sparks onto that, that'll probably just light by itself. Um, another thing that lights really easily is something like fatwood. Where did I have fatwood just now? So this is just a piece of fatwood that's actually broken off a branch of the tree here. Um, it's just wood that's got a lot of resin in it and it'll light really easily. So if you shave that off with the spine of your knife, you make a couple of shavings of that, um, add it into your tinder bundle and that should help you to light your tinder bundle. So this is when I take your attention back to that fire triangle. If any one of these elements are not complete or they're not adequate, you're going to struggle to start a fire. If your tinder bundle is not processed properly, you're going to struggle to start a fire. If you're not putting enough pressure on your ferro rod while you're scraping it, or you don't have an instrument or a scraper that has a 90 degree spine, you're going to struggle to generate enough heat from that ferro rod to start your fire. To get into technique, the best thing that I find you can do is to actually hold your knife still and pull the ferro rod away from the knife rather than trying to push the knife into the ferro rod or into your tinder bundle and you risk then actually disturbing the tinder bundle and not getting that flame going. This isn't a very big piece of fat wood. Just make tiny little shavings. And usually with a ferro rod you don't want to have to strike it too many times because it uses up your resources. But that's ideally what you want. You want within a few strikes to be able to get your fire going because otherwise you are going to end up wasting your resources. So my technique is this. I usually have either my boot or some or the other log that I can rest my hand on and I block my knife here and then what I do is I put the ferro rod up against the knife and I pull in order to direct the sparks into my tinder bundle. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and that you'll comment below if you've got any really cool tips for making fire with a ferro rod. Let me know where you guys are watching from and until the next time, live ready.